The Net Zero Energy Ready Challenge is a Clean BC incentive program and juried competition for large buildings launched in 2018. It provides financial support for developments targeting net zero energy ready levels of performance and aims to celebrate, promote, and learn from BC's most innovative and energy efficient projects. Integral Group and Vancouver's Zero Emissions Building Exchange have commissioned a series of six technical playbooks and accompanying videos to help our development, design, and construction communities make net zero energy ready buildings a reality before they are required throughout the province in 2032. This playbook and video, developed by AME Group and Zebex, is about ventilation strategies for high-performance, multi-unit residential buildings. Hello, my name is Patrick Stewart and I'm a principal at the AME Group. I've been designing mechanical building systems for about 10 years now. Today I'm here in collaboration with Zebex to talk about ventilation strategies for high-performance, multi-unit residential buildings, or MERBs. This is one of many presentations included in the Net Zero Energy Ready Playbook series. For the first part of this series, I'm going to introduce you to the topic of ventilation and why we're talking about it. So why is ventilation important? Interestingly enough, ventilation was never talked or thought about much until news broke about airborne viruses being transferable through ventilation and HVAC systems. However, that's definitely important. We're not here to talk about that today. Instead, we're here to discuss standard ventilation strategies for high-performing buildings and how they might impact your building design, impact your stakeholders, as well, of course, how it's all tied into energy performance. If you're watching this, you're probably familiar with the BC STEP code and have likely heard of the acronym TEDI. TEDI is defined as the annual heat loss from a building's envelope and ventilation after accounting for all passive heat gains and losses. It is represented as a unit rate per square meter. While defined slightly differently, both Passive House Standard and BC Step Code identify TEDI target limits. With these limits on TEDI and Passive House designs, as well as Step 3 and Step 4 Part 3 residential buildings, the focus on high efficiency ventilation solutions has become the focus in the industry. An inefficient ventilation system may trigger expensive envelope upgrades in order to meet your project's TEDI targets. I should mention, in order to be high performance MERB, you need to achieve step three or four of the BC Energy Step Code or Passive House Standard. Historically, building systems have been quite simple for MERBs. Typically, you would see a makeup air unit fan sitting on the roof with a large gas burner. This fan would distribute its ductwork around the building and ventilate just the corridors. Air would then transfer underneath the suite doors where it would be exhausted through bathroom fans or other appliances such as clothes dryers or kitchen range hoods. Nowadays, this older ventilation strategy does not meet the latest version of the BC building code. So now we have a variety of ventilation options to keep up with the evolving building and energy codes. Now I know engineers aren't known for their communication skills, but it's super important the designer clearly lays out the options early so the owner can make an informed decision. At a minimum, the categories shown in the slide need to be discussed with the owners and design team before any drafting starts. The road ahead is not dark and gloomy. In fact, it's energy efficient and comfortable. In the province of British Columbia, it was declared that the building must be delivering net zero energy ready new construction projects by 2032. By 2022, all new Part 3 buildings must be 20% more efficient than what is currently required of them under the BC Building Code. By 2027, the target will increase to 40% more efficient. And by the year 2032, the target will be 80% more efficient. This is the core foundation to the BC Step Code. While not mandatory yet, about 24% of all British Columbia's municipalities have adopted the BC Energy Step Code. Now looking at progressive municipalities, the City of Vancouver enacted its Zero Emission Building Plan in 2017. Starting in 2025, the Zero Emissions Building Plan will mandate all new low-rise MERBs and office buildings to have no operational GHG emissions. The residential buildings will also be required to meet TEDI targets no more than 15 kilowatt hours per square meter annually, which is about equivalent to a Step 4 code building. So, before we get into the meat of the video, the key items we want you to take away are how ventilation systems are a large part of the energy consumption in your design for high performance buildings. We will learn about three main ventilation system strategies suited for high performance MERBs. And finally, 
Just how these three options impact building design decisions and building operation. When choosing a ventilation system, there are a number of factors to consider that will assist in reaching a design solution that best suits your project. Designers and building owners will need to weigh the pros and cons of each ventilation system with the project specific goals in mind to come to the best solution for their unique situation. So when starting a project off in design, at least discuss these three main options. Centralized, semi-centralized, and fully decentralized. Before we dive into the three options, I should probably note that the supply and exhaust air are not mixed in any of the above systems. All units receive 100% filtered outdoor air, all of which is exhausted to the outdoors. Before that air is exhausted out of the building, heat energy is captured and transferred into the supply air using heat or energy recovery ventilators, also known as HRVs or ERVs. A centralized system, you guessed it, is one that uses a single HRV that will serve the entire building. In some instances, a single unit may not be large enough to serve the entire building, in which case multiple units can be used. The main idea here is that they're all located in a central spot. Each suite is connected to the HRV through a network of supply and exhaust air ducting. The HRVs for centralized ventilation systems can be located on the roof, in the parkade, or even a dedicated mechanical room inside the building. We will discuss the system options pros and cons later in this video. A semi-centralized ventilation system is a cross between a centralized and decentralized system. A semi-centralized system is typically used to reduce large ducts of centralized systems within supplying air from the HRV on either a floor-by-floor -floor basis or a vertical stack of suites. So you can imagine that each floor on your MERB would have its own dedicated fan room or multiple units on the roof that would serve vertically down the specific zones. Generally, these zones are organized by solar exposure, east, west, north, and south. I would say that this solution is probably used the least, however, it does still have its place on projects. A decentralized ventilation system is one that uses a bunch of small, dedicated HRV or ERVs, each to serve a single individual suite within the building. Each suite now has connections to the HRV through supply and exhaust terminations on the exterior of the building, as well as a small network of supply and exhaust ducting within each suite. Because each HRV unit has its own dedicated suite, it's easy for the ventilation to be increased through a switch or controller by the occupant living in the suite. Developers typically consider construction cost, high floor space ratio, or FSR, and the number of suites in the building to maximize their return on investment. In municipalities where there are no exclusions for mechanical shafts in the FSR calculations, developers tend to prefer decentralized ventilation systems. This is due to the centralized and semi-centralized ventilation systems options requiring mechanical shaft space that results in developers losing their valuable floor space. Although the capital construction cost for a centralized ventilation system may be less than a decentralized ventilation system, when factoring in the FSR and the quantity of suites that can be included in the development, this could result in a reduced overall sales revenue. Sometimes a building may need a taller floor to floor height on the top floor to distribute large centralized ducts. Often this isn't possible due to rezoning building height restrictions. I have even been involved in projects where HRVs couldn't be used on the roof because it negatively impacted the shading study required by the city. The decision on ventilation distribution will have an impact on the project costs, whether it's through a mechanical room space, bulkheads, equipment costs, or FSR. Under the latest BC building code in residential occupancies, any ducting passing through a fire rated wall will require a combination fire smoke damper at each wall penetration. This has huge implications on a centralized and semi-centralized ventilation option because the HRVs live outside the living suites. Although there may be other features of these systems that are less expensive than a decentralized ventilation option, the coordination required to install these fire smoke dampers is significant. It is also worth noting that the fire smoke dampers are mandated to be inspected annually by the BC Fire Code. Noise is always important but often overlooked in design. In a decentralized system, the small HRVs installed within the suite emit relatively low noise. 
Centralized or semi-centralized systems can be many times quieter and easily controlled as the HRV is not located within the suite. One benefit of efficient HRV units being used to reduce TEDI values is that they are typically much quieter than the lower efficient HRVs. These high efficiency HRVs have more efficient ECM fans, usually more insulation to dampen sound, as well a more robust casing construction that helps further reduce breakout noise. In a building where landlord or strata corporation is responsible for maintenance of the ventilation system, Centralized or semi-centralized systems are often preferred in order to help facilitate maintenance of the system. Maintenance for these HRVs typically consists of filter replacement, but can also include general cleaning and repairing of dampers or other components. It is easier, and therefore less expensive, to maintain one larger HRV in a centralized system or a few mid-sized HRVs in a semi-centralized system than it is to maintain many smaller HRVs located inside the occupied suites. More control to tenants can remove a lot of headaches that a building operator may have to deal with otherwise. A decentralized system gives the occupants more occupant control without affecting the other suites. An occupant can boost the ventilation suite or bypass HRV heat exchanger without causing a change in the ventilation to the other suites. This would be done through a wall switch in a washroom and can provide a sense of control by occupants. There are ways to do this in a centralized systems. However, you'll have to add a more complex variable air volume control system for each suite. This can add lots of additional cost to a centralized system project that may have been unseen at the beginning of the project. The ventilation strategy should never have an adverse impact on occupant comfort or indoor air quality. Each of these three options talked about will provide a high level of both of providing 100% filtered tempered air and exhausting all of it to the outdoors. Cooling loads can be significantly decreased in high performance buildings through the use of exterior shading and proper glazing. In the lower mainland, we live in an area where we can get by without adding mechanical cooling. We have heard of some high performance heating only projects that are experiencing overheating issues in the summer months. A centralized ventilation system lends itself to an affordable method of providing partial cooling through its ventilation air. This would be done by adding a small AC coil to the centralized ventilation unit to temper its air to the suites. While it's not full cooling, it can be enough to take the edge off rather than incorporating a fully air conditioning building. The market for high efficient suite by suite or decentralized HRVs is very thin right now. HRVs with 80% plus efficient heat recovery comes at a capital cost premium. These units are also larger than typical suite HRVs, so extra attention is required to designing ceiling space requirements. There's a much larger market for higher performing HRVs for the centralized and semi-centralized options. It is also important to note that suite by suite HRVs require many more envelope penetrations, which will impact the envelope's overall thermal performance. Now we're going to look at a case study. UBC Properties Trust, on behalf of UBC, built a brand new student residence known as a Skeena Residence. This project is located at the UBC Okanagan campus and has provided 220 beds for new students. The project was constructed to pass a standard and is currently seeking its certification. This would be UBC's first Passive House certified project and will help further establish UBC as a leader in sustainability. We were lucky enough to be part of this project alongside Public Architecture Communications as the prime consultant with RDH Building Science as the Passive House consultant. It's important to know your audience, in this case, our stakeholders. UBC will be the owner of this project and will be operated by their Student Housing and Community Services Group. The UBC Sustainability Group was also involved in the design process. UBC Properties Trust was a developer and the project was contracted using a construction management process which helped identify capital costs and constructability issues early on. Know your climate. The climate in Kelowna is much different than here in the Lower Mainland. Warm summers are followed by cold, dry winters. Choosing the right HRV heat exchanger is important when considering your climate. In cold climates, there is a risk your HRV heat exchanger could freeze. If the heat exchanger freezes, the unit would go into a defrost mode. Now the amount of times the HRV goes into a defrost mode has pretty serious impacts on the building's overall Teddy performance. 
The HRV unit selected for this project utilized a rotary wheel type heat exchanger that could modulate its wheel speed to avoid costly defrost cycles. Keeping the HRV effective during the coldest periods of the year is key to a high efficient ventilation system. So what is important in this case? We know who our stakeholders are. Simply ask them what their top priorities are. Maintenance becomes very important to the owners if they plan on operating the building. Remember, construction cost is only a fraction of the building's overall life cycle cost. An early investment can save money on maintenance in the long term. In this case, a decentralized system would add a lot of additional maintenance points in the building. Access to living suites would require coordination with the tenant for standard filter changes. We also know that forest fires are more prevalent in this region, which could lead to more frequent filter changes than normal. Building resiliency into the project is often overlooked. This becomes more relevant when the stakeholders involved are the owners and operators of the building. Having redundant systems in the event of a failure can keep buildings operational all year. In this case, resiliency was built into the central ventilation system by incorporating two HRV units in parallel. While this was primarily looked at due to space constraints and market availability of larger Passive House certified units, inherently the system now has some built-in redundancy. I should mention that the system was not designed to be 100% redundant. However, having some backup ventilation while one unit is down for maintenance provides a small amount of ventilation air. As mentioned earlier, this project is on the path to Passive House certification. So energy efficiency was looked at in detail for all aspects of the project. A centralized ventilation system lended itself to a higher performing solution. The larger centralized HRV units tend to have a higher energy efficiency. Also, locating the HRVs inside the building envelope eliminated large thermal breaks in the envelope caused by equipment roof curbs. The thermal bridges caused by outside air ducts are more easily controlled through careful detailing at the building envelope. So as you might have guessed, at the end of the day, a centralized ventilation system was chosen for this project. However, the design doesn't end there. You should pay close attention to the ducting layout. The ducting layout and design has a huge impact on reducing the fan energy power. A well-designed duct distribution system will allow for the installation of properly sized HRVs without oversizing which in turn reduces capital and operational costs. In this case, the distribution system was kept very simple by using long straight runs of ducts while minimizing elbows and fittings. What is shown here is a typical floor plan of the duct distribution. The ducts run vertically in a central shaft then are distributed in the ceiling space of the floors. Air was supplied to the living spaces and corridors and exhausted through bathrooms and service spaces. Each floor had equal parts makeup air to exhaust air. So, in summary, what are the key considerations on designing a successful high-performance ventilation system? Talk to your stakeholders. Owners, designers, and often contractors should come together as early as possible in the development of these projects. This will help define project goals and create decision pathways to ensure the building will meet the needs of the occupants while maintaining the energy efficiency goals. Work on the mechanical system strategy early Centralized ventilation systems often require large ductwork runs down the corridors. This configuration lowers the ceiling heights within the corridor but can be utilized to maximize the available ceiling height within the suite. All three ventilation options will have different implications on the floor to floor heights of the building and can affect the overall building form and architectural expressions. Take more time planning your ventilation duct routing to keep the design simple. It will keep capital costs down and keep issues in the field low. A happy contractor leads to a great final product and a happy client. Always identify challenges in construction to the contractors. In our case, we are dealing with very low air flows to each air outlet. Bringing up these challenges can alert the builders that more attention is needed to duct sealing to avoid issues in the commissioning stages of the project. And that wraps up our case study. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in learning more about high efficiency ventilation systems and other technical topics, check out our Net Zero Energy Ready Playbook series and accompanying videos at zebex.org.